to adult podcast and i'm your host jasmine hey how's it going i'm so excited you guys would come on to youtube and watch today today's shirt this week is the one you guys have been waiting to see and helped raise money for but it is the shirt that leah pratt came out with um for breast cancer awareness month in october anyone who donated anyone who ordered shirt thank you so much she did reach her goal well over it so that was awesome she raised so much money and now she's the community service chair for our sorority so absolutely amazing so proud of her and i'm so excited for you guys to hear about today's episode so let's get into it what's up everybody welcome back to the adult algorithm the how to adult podcast and i'm your host jasmine johnson it is week nine i can't believe how fast the time has gone by but it is already week nine and this episode is very special to my heart. It has a very special guest. I'm very excited for you guys to hear about her story. And really what I want you guys to get out of today's episode is don't stop thriving and, you know, being motivated for what you want. Don't settle for less and know your value, know your worth. Because when you go into a job or an internship or any kind of situation and they don't treat you as though you deserve to be there or they don't treat you to your value you need to leave get out of there because there's better things out there for you so today's episode is going to be on internships and I would have loved to talk about my internship for an entire episode but I think that would have been kind of boring it was a four-week internship online and it was supposed to be eight weeks in person in Boston but because of coronavirus it was four weeks online and it was with a big four accounting firm it's my process is a little bit boring so I don't want to you know keep it boring or make internships sound boring I my situation is just different I did a leadership conference after my freshman year I went to Disney with the same company and from that we got the internship for the next summer so that was a really awesome experience. I absolutely loved it, but I definitely wanted to hear, you know, someone else's perspective on their internship. And Shelby's story about her internship is my favorite out of any anybody else's. Um, no offense to anyone else, but once you hear the story, you'll know exactly what I mean. And I'm so excited for you guys to hear what she has to say and all the advice she has for you guys. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. I'm excited for you guys to hear this episode. This is an awesome one to come in on. But if you are new, we are the Adult Algorithm, the How To Adult Podcast, and we are teaching you everything that the schools, um, our high schools, you know, kind of disappointed and didn't teach us during high school that we should have learned for the basics that we need to know for adulting. So I'm excited for you guys to join us. If you're just coming back here like you do every week, Welcome back, and I'm excited for you guys to hear today's episode, so let's get right into it. Hi guys, I have a very special guest on today, and this is her. We are together in person. Hi. Hi, Hi Shelby. Um, This is wild, because this is my first in-person interview. Fun fact, we're doing it on a MacBook, so sorry that the camera quality is a little bit weird but thank you for coming on yes of course and disclaimer we both tested negative before this happened yes so don't worry. um very safe shelby has to fly home very soon which she'll say where she's from because i think it's very unique <laughs> um and i love talking about it so she has to fly home soon so we had to make sure that we were both negative so i did not risk that for her because i do want her to go home and see her amazing family for the holidays mm -hmm. so you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, guys. My name is Shelby Kansky. I'm 20 years old. I'm a junior at the University of Rhode Island studying textiles, merchandising, and design. Actually going to be a senior next semester, oh, which is really interesting. That's not happening. Um, I'm currently also creating my own minor called sustainability within the fashion industry because that's my passion and what i want to focus on and the school didn't have any programs for that so i made my own that's right um i'm from north dakota yes ma'am yes it's always interesting that's kind of uh -huh. how we got really close just that topic really fascinates jasmine here um also the president of fashion merchandising society on campus and i'm also an ra ah uh, a queen a queen as we would say um Literally, so we met in our URI 101 class. Yeah. 
was it two years ago? Two like, years ago. Like our anniversary. <laughs> oh, yes. So we went out to dinner. Again, very safe. Um, very, very safe, we swear. Um, very good food. Um, we dressed up a little. So that's why we look so cute right now. I'm usually in a sweatshirt. But we met in our URI 101 class. You guys know that I teach URI 101. Mm -hmm. So it's very full circle. It's crazy. Um, that class was a little interesting, mm -hmm. but. Um, she was the normal one. That's We clicked. Yeah. This was this was good. <laughs> um, it was us and Sophia, mm -hmm. and so fun. Love to see it. But yeah, we met in URI one one. We've been friends ever since. But that spring, we did a program. Um, well, that actually that fall, I was still in Team D classes because I switched my major over in the summer, so I still had a like good amount of classes mm -hmm. with you. We yeah. had what? Yeah. Strubles together. Yeah. We had. Um, we had econ. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We were always taking those business classes. Yeah. The you know, your gen eds. Um, but then when we like super duper clicked, um, when we went to New York City for all of spring break, it was an amazing experience. I mean, we met the most amazing people on that trip. I mean, getting to know like Goswami and yeah, Hannah, the like our department. It was really interesting. It was um, we were the only freshmen and it was basically a bunch yep. of seniors. And so also wherever yeah. we went, these companies were recruiting and we're yeah. like, we're, we're, we're freshmen. freshmen. Sorry. Sorry. I was um, like, I'm accounting. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but you were like the whole outlier in this whole situation. It was so funny. Um, but we just got so much closer during that trip because yeah. of that trip. And like since then, like this is it. Yeah. And I knew you were talented when you walked into Kleinfeld Bridal. Obviously say yes to the dress. Um, and she just walked in, you know, was just like, can I get someone's card? Or what, what even happened? Like, I was with someone and they wanted to get a picture yeah. with, oh, that's right, Randy with, Finoli. Yeah. And he wasn't there, but they're like, hey, let's like hear more about you and Lisa, Lisa. from the show. Yes. She, her right. brother went to URI. So we had a connection and then she was asking about a major. And she's like, do you want an internship? Do you want to work here? And I actually did get an internship opportunity with them that I had to turn down. But they, from that, from that chance encounter, I was offered in, to intern with them in New York City. As a freshman. You know what I was doing while she did that? I was napping. <laughs> I was napping. Me and Christy were napping because we were exhausted walking we asked around. We to come with. I know, you're right. And I do regret. I do regret now. But we had to get that nap. And that Never sleep. I that never trip sleep. was awesome. It but was amazing. So many opportunities came out of that trip. I mean, we became closer. And you want to know how close we became? This yep, girl, I was just she about to flew <laughs> to Minnesota, yep. not quite North Dakota. She hasn't made that jump yet. Um, to go to a concert with me because I just bought yep. two tickets. Macroeconomic study yep. session. Khalid came out, bought two tickets, had no one to go with, and she's like, "I'll come." And she flew out, and we spent a whole week together. <laughs> that was so and fun. It was the best time of my life. It was like, awesome, wasn't it? It was amazing. That was really fun. And I had never been. I went to California, but that's not the Midwest. <laughs> Obviously, duh. It's a little different. It's a little different, but like I'd never gone out like that super far, so that was that was amazing. Like, and Khalid, I mean, that shout was, out Khalid because that, that concert was, was awesome. She cried. Oh yeah, we cried. Yeah, yeah. Our yeah. our outfit. We were matching. Insert picture here. <laughs> <laughs> it was fabulous. It was so good. But yes, now we're super duper close. But we are two of the busiest people, I think. Ever on this entire queens, planet, we bosses, are. We are. We always talk about how um, we're going to be so successful. I can't wait for you guys to hear about her internship this summer. You're going to die because I was thinking like, oh, who can I get to talk about internships? I did an internship, but accounting internships are a little bit boring. I didn't have, you know, much substance to it. And I was like, you know, it was a no brainer that Shelby's internship was the best one I had seen out of all my friends and everyone that I talked to. So I'm so excited for you to tell them. It's going to be great. Um, and hopefully you guys like it. So I'm going to start asking you questions. Get ready. And here we go. So how did the process start of applying? How many internships did you apply for? Do you remember? Over 20. Oh, 30, maybe 40. Um, that's insane. It started sophomore year, my freshman, no, sophomore year, mm -hmm. um, fall semester. I just started applying like crazy. Um, it's hard because internships come and go, they pop up, they have weird yeah. timelines. So you, I started applying September, but I was applying through the next year. Yeah. Um, I was hearing a lot of re rejection letters, but some didn't even hear back from at all. It's the next year, it's January, February. I'm still applying, but at this point I'm just like, all right, I'm not hearing anything. It's getting kind of late for the summer. I was applying for the summer. I was like, I don't think this is going to happen. And I was, I wasn't like disheartened. I had more years. I just was hoping to get something as a sophomore, but I also know that's a stretch. I was just about to say, in the fashion world, it's very mm -hmm. different from any other business major um, yeah. with internships. 
I know when I was fashion major, when I came to open house, they were like, don't expect an internship mm -hmm. till the end of your junior year. Yeah, junior year is lucky. Um, it's usually senior year when you graduate. So I knew that, but I'm ambitious and I didn't yeah. care. So I was applying to everything, <laughs> even though things I knew, like I was applying to the house of Chanel in Paris. I knew I wasn't going to get that, everything. but you never know. You never know. Um, that was okay, but it was February, mm -hmm. and I didn't hear anything from anyone. Well, uh, Kleinfelds. I did get Kleinfelds, but that just wasn't a logistical opportunity. It was unpaid, right. New York City. Didn't know how I was going to make that work, so I did have to turn that one down. Um, and then a professor came to me with an opportunity for a study abroad, where she was going to sponsor me um, for a month in Lyon, France. And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing anything this summer. Let's do it. So it's one night. I'm in the RA office. I'm looking to book a ticket to France for this, that night. that night. And then the College of Business sends out their weekly newsletter. And I'm not gonna lie, I usually delete it right away. I, Everyone does, there's never really fine. anything in there for fashion majors, right. all right? It's, it's really business Oh, that's gear. a whole other conversation. That's a whole other conversation. Fashion discrimination in the College of Business. TMD. So I almost deleted it, but I saw internship opportunities and I always check it. Um, and I checked and it had an opportunity, it said Martha's Vineyard, retail leadership internship. I'm like, all right, that sounds interesting as I have my like laptop open with flight tickets here out of Canada to France. Um, and I looked at this opportunity and it sounded too good to be true. Mm -hmm. It was paid um, and housing was included. And that's a huge thing for me as being from North Dakota, I'm not from New England. Um, and I, it's really not accessible for me mm -hmm. to just have housing, to stay somewhere to live and money is always hard, but always it was paid. Yeah. Um, housing was included, it was retail leadership. So it was really focused on job opportunities with merchandising, retail, which, um, at that point, I wasn't picky. It may not have been like my first. <laughs> and this was February. This right? is February. Oh it's, I'm more into like the creative aspect, the product development, design. But I was like, hey, anything, any experience, this is great. Literally, it was on Chegg. I uh, put my resume That's on there. Funny. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, it, it was interesting, and it had like a little description about just why you want it. And I really, guys, I had no hope. I submitted that. Woke up the next morning, and I saw I had an email sent to me at 3 a.m. <laughs> 3 a.m. and it was from Richard White, the district manager at South Fisher Grape, the area coordinator and internship coordinator for the island, like Martha's Vineyard. We have three stores on the island. Um, and he's like, hi, really love your resume. This is amazing. Can we set up a phone interview for today? I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just jumped on my own spit. He worked fast. <laughs> um, and <laughs> it was crazy because I was really like, what? I just they got myself into the mindset I wasn't gonna have an internship this summer. So I was like, okay, don't get too too excited. Um, phone interview with him. I had a lot of interviews before too, just in general mock interviews. This was the best interview I've ever had in my life. It was almost two hours long. Iconic, that's um, good. But also like this man, he is just such a personality. And mm -hmm. so it wasn't a normal interview, like whatever they prepared you for. You're used to personality, you're friends with me. So. <laughs> for sure, no, that's, he really, like I got on the phone call, he's like, how's your day going? How's everything? I see you're an RA and like, he's just, it was a conversation. And then mm -hmm. like we got to my resume afterwards, he told me more about the job, but he told me about the job and he's like, well, what are your interests? And I didn't lie and I said, awesome. I'm interested in design. I love product development and sustainability is my passion. I want to incorporate all of that. And he's like, well, we've never really had that interest, you know, it's retail leadership. Mm -hmm. So we always get merchandising business. He's like, but um, this is a small company in the aspect where there's, it's just really accessible mm -hmm. to move up and to like know the higher ups. Like he's best friends with the COO, COO and CEO because he went to high school with them. Um, so he's it's like, if family. you wanted to work with us on our sustainability initiatives, we would love that. If you want to work on the design team, they're flying out from New York City for the summer to work on the next line. If you want to be put on that, you can. So it literally was an opportunity where it's like, whatever you want. Like I will be doing retail leadership, but if you want to go above and beyond, we want you to do that. And I was like, you know what, I'm sold. Like, this is amazing. And he's told me on that phone interview, he's like, if you want this, like you're, you're hired. And I was like, okay. And it just happened right there. And then right after that interview, he sent me the paperwork. He's like, clearly you have time to think this through, but he's like, but we would love if you just would like sign this so mm -hmm. we can get into the process. Um, and I just, it all happened that same day. It was a Thursday. It happened all within like three hours of each other. I signed the paperwork. And then we had another um, phone call and he was just telling me more about the logistics with, there was three other interns as well. So there's mm. three of us. Then he gave me more information on housing. So it's company housing. I've 
the store I was working in was in Oak Bluffs on Martha's Vineyard, and um, the apartment was right above the store, so I lived above where <laughs> I worked, insane. and I was a minute away from the beach. My apartment had a deck, and I woke up every morning and saw the ocean from my deck. Um, it was just an amazing experience, but I got this opportunity in February that COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we were hesitant to see where that would go, mm -hmm. how would things work, um, and the communication was impeccable. He was communicating with me as well as the other two interns this whole time, just saying, like, okay, we still want to make this work. We don't know. It could be virtual. Of course, they had to work that out. It was March, and then I was supposed to start in May when school got out, but I was oh. home in North Dakota. Oh. So this was changing the dates. Okay. Um, it was a May through August internship, like usually all of that right, was right. from May through yeah. August the end of May, um, but they were just so flexible because also the other intern we were, was in Germany at that time, oh, Air Force Base, that, she was say that. Air Force family. She goes to um, school in Bryant, um, Bryant College, oh, I Bryant. think. Yep. yep, that's where she goes to school and the other one goes to Bentley. Oh my um, God, those are like the top, I, us, Bryant and Bentley are like the top like three business schools. Yeah, so oh, she, that, one, she was, one was marketing and the other oh, was, oh, um, wow. I think hers was just like merchandising. Wow. So yeah, so it was That's all insane. very connected, but like they were so flexible working with our schedules and what would work. And we were having Zoom meetings together to try to figure it out. So they always wow. like, kept us a part of the conversation, just talking about like what we wanted from them. Yeah. And they're like, if you guys were comfortable, um, we'd love to come have you. If you wanted it virtual, we'd do it virtual for you. Because we were all like really far away. She was in oh, Germany, one was in Hawaii, and I was in North Dakota. <laughs> um, in your new house. In my little house. <laughs> um, so it worked out. We all came at different dates. I was the first one to arrive. It still worked. Of course. It was in May um, because school had different deadlines. Mm -hmm. I think I went in the middle of May instead of the end. Mm -hmm. um, they let me like get acclimated right away, but I, I started really fast. It was oh, a yeah. retail leadership internship, so they needed hands on deck with the stores. They weren't ready to open. We were in the era of COVID, so we had that curbside pickup going on. We oh, really had yeah, to increase wow. our social media game, which theirs was really lacking a little bit because it was um they didn't have a lot of fresh young people working on it hey, but so, that happens at every company i mean they, honestly always fresh eyes and young young yeah. like uh ideas and creativity mm -hmm. always helps so. so that was kind totally. of fun and like this company i just love it because it's so imaginative and inclusive yeah. where they're just like what do you guys want to see what do you want how can we improve and they're always asking us for feedback and they take it and then they'll do it and they'll be like hey did that work did that not work um, it's amazing. It was it was amazing. It was like a small but big company at the same time. We have 13 locations across New England and then one in Florida. Um, it's resort apparel retail. I think a lot of people watching this know soft as a grape. Um, yeah. Anything if you go to Newport, I see people wearing sweatshirts oh, yeah. here. Oh, we have a store classic. in Point Judith right by school. Yeah, and it's just like comfort quality clothing that mm -hmm. you just screen print on it. Um, but they also do wholesale all over the world, and they um, wholesale MLB licensing contracts for women's and children's wear. So they have a lot going on, but they're a pretty secure company. Yeah. Um, but we were transitioning with COVID and masks became our number one priority. They shifted to ready. masks. They shifted to masks. And that was interesting to see in May because it was always, it was actually a lot of fun to see that we didn't know if they were going to sell. And then we kept changing our prices. And then mm -hmm. I was kind of put in charge of that um, as like demand to see what people were asking, what they wanted. The way we were, our turnaround was like a few days because our factory was on wear, wear, wear a mask oh, on the wow. cape. So wow. when we told them, hey, this is selling, but they're literally customers are asking for this in black. Can you get us in black and white, for example? Two days later, we'd have wow. 300 of them. We'd get shipments of 300 to 1,000 masks at a time. Yeah. And we're selling around 500 a week. Wait a minute. How do you get feedback from customers? As they're checking out in the store. Wow. They're like, hey, do you have this in black? And I'm like, no, I don't. But if as but so if many people are asking want. it, I'm hearing it, I just literally call up Kim, who's the art director or anyone, wow. and just tell them this is, and it was just such an open communication, open yeah. dialogue company. Um, and the important. other interns were coming and then we had three stores. So each intern was like at a store and kind of like managed oh, our own store fine. in a way as a key holder. Um, so during the day I was doing that, but I still wanted to get onto that promise that Richard told me that I could work on design if I wanted to, or very um, creative, one yes. of the most creative <laughs> women I've ever met in my life. Thank um, you. so if you did not get that opportunity, I would have been like, that is wasted talent. Well, it was a lot of, you know, transitioning the store and I understood that. And I just kind of asked like, Hey, is this still an opportunity? Um, mm. and it was the art team didn't come down from New York like they were supposed to. And like their resort line was going to be put off because they didn't know what the fall was going to look oh, yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah. But throughout the summer, um, well, the whole time my boss, like once we kind of got into the things and it was 
more chill and casual. June was quiet. July picked up after the Fourth of yeah. July. Oh, I believe it. Um, oh my god. Fun fact: This is what you guys, if you don't know what retail was like in the era of COVID, oh god. we didn't hurt. We beat all records of yep. sales this company has ever had in their entire life. Yeah. Um. So they mm -hmm. sweatpants, guys. It was masks. We sold the most of and sweatpants, basic sweatpants. Last year they sold eight hundred pairs, the whole summer. This summer, we sold 500 pairs of sweatpants every week. Oh my god. We couldn't keep them in the store. But That's... think about that, because everyone's home, there's yeah. Zoom meetings, we're wearing like comfort loungewear, so everyone wanted Smart. sweatpants. That's, so yeah. we and were doing very well, very well in terms of sales, beating records. It was always a celebration. We would always have competitions with like which oh, store on the yeah. island could do the most, and then we would get like awesome. huge parties. We would get like seafood parties, the day nice. off, we'd go to the beach. It was just really 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 fun Martha's, environment martha's vineyard is pretty would you say it's small it's definitely bigger, block than block okay, it's bigger it's than block island okay it's bigger than definitely bigger than block island it's small okay. in itself but um i'd say it's like takes about an hour to get from one end of the island to the other okay all so right. it's not awful um it has two ferries going on all the time wow. three major towns vineyard haven oak bluffs and where are um, the um edgar town where are the ferries out of point judith no, that's um, so there is one in Rhode Island, but that one was closed. Oh. But like you have to go to the Cape, so oh duh, it's like me. What's whole? What's geography? It. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is massive. I know, like there is a ferry from Rhode yeah. Island, but unfortunately that ferry was okay. closed and has been closed, which is sad. That's... I wanted to go back when I was at school, but that's that's ferry why I closed. didn't go. Sorry, Shelby. I know that would have been that's so fun. We, you were gonna come. I know, and then, like you said, sales were. It was, it, was crazy. Crazy. it was crazy for retail so i'm working all the time mm -hmm. and you know like you said you're selling so many um more pairs of you know whatever like loungewear i like, mean mm -hmm. when when we opened again we you know you miss out on those what two two months two three i can't even remember it's like yeah well like two and a half um of sales but you make up for it when you open and i didn't that think that was we were so surprising to... wasn't it so many people in our store and i mean and we t we take really good precautions at um where i work but like it's absolutely insane how many people needed they needed clothes and people were like why are they out well people grow and the people were growing <laughs> growing <laughs> growing okay on to the next <laughs> continue <laughs> <laughs> inside joke so okay. sorry okay um yeah but also like the aspect people also i think wanted normalcy like shopping oh. was the one thing we were still open people wanted to go out and do that um yeah we had lots of precautions to cleaning schedules all that everything you expected it was and it wasn't even a burden like i was just so thankful to be there to be open every day oh, i felt safe the whole time we did so well um and also the island i want to just commend anyone who was there it was so amazing every single person thousand percent like a did the regulations they wow. didn't complain it was amazing we had like no cases on the island itself um free testing on the island someone oh. who is really rich there bought out um space like they, the high school was testing the whole summer you could go at any point wow. however you wanted for free. like how you or i is doing yeah, yeah, it yeah. some rich whoever wanted the island be able to was open it obama? no i wish oh. it was obama was there all summer guys it was amazing <laughs> michelle rock Lots of, lots, of, lots of those famous people oh, yeah. were there. Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Heard you were there when I was there. Sorry to miss you. Um, but. <laughs> I thought Spike Lee was dead. This sounds uneducated, <laughs> but sorry. Like, when you said that, I was like, wait. His house is, like, right across the street from our store. Love it. Which is pretty cool. On the pond. It's not a pond. <laughs> um, rich people. Pond. Rich people terms. They're like, that's a pool. That's. <laughs> That's a pool. You own a whole lake. A you own a whole lake. lake, and you're calling it a pond. Sorry. Side note. Um, That's gonna be us when we're rich, so we can't say shit. Oh, we were <laughs> talked about the island. We're gonna have a house there. She's gonna have her own private jet. Yeah, She's gonna, gonna fly me around, fly me to her wedding. <laughs> 2028. Get ready. Uh, I don't the even know all these references. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yep. This is gonna be a time capsule video. So when we look back and this happens, oh. you'll see how right we were, though. Yes, you're come right. true. This is amazing. Um, but that was just kind of it for the whole summer. It was a lot of fun, but I was still on Richard about wanting to do more. And he's like, well, what do you want to do? Because I could have done anything I wanted. And as, as I was an RA, I said, I would really love to make masks for my residents, but like you or I on them or something. And he's like, okay, but you're going to have to contact your school. You'll need approval with trademark and licensing. I was like, all right. Went through that process, found out who to contact and sent them a whole thing. Like, hi, I'm whatever. This is my major, my year. I'm an RA president i like gave them my whole Listen little spiel my whole spiel okay and this is important yeah 
Paul Whitney, the director of the campus store at URI, is also in charge of the trademark and licensing for the school. For any, like that logo you see anywhere, it's all up to him. And he read my Pressure. email, got back to me, was like, hey, are you available with your boss, Richard White, mm -hmm. for a Zoom meeting Friday at this time? And I was like, yeah. He's like, it's a lot to go over, so I think we should talk about it. I was like, okay, that sounds mm -hmm. promising. Get a Zoom meeting. Um, and the first thing he told us was like, all right, he's like, I just want to let you know, Richard reached out to me. He's like, I would have trashed that email. I would have never read it <laughs> because he's like, it was from a student at URI um, and the way it's so personal. He's like, we worked with people from FMS in the past with the store. He's like, I was an RA myself in college. And he's like, I really respect the RAs on campus. I know what your job's like. And he's like, so I was really glad to hear from you. We love highlighting students. But unfortunately, um, no you can't make masks with the trademark on them. He's like, it's just really not worth it because royalties, you'd, ha mm. you'd have to pay them. Yep. He's like, and you're doing this for free. It's not like you're selling it. Um, he's like, I just don't think it's worth it with the process. And I was like, heart. All Broken. right. Kind of hurt. That's literally how this meeting started. Okay. Um, but the person, that's what I say all the time. You have to be personable. That is how you get jobs and internships mm -hmm. is with your personality. Your resume is a piece of freaking paper. Your GPA? It's the connection. Or two, or three, four, whatever fucking numbers there are in a GPA. It's the connections. It's the personality. It's the way you reach out to people and it's the networking that is going to get you that internship. And that's when he said afterwards, he's like, if it was Richard that reached out, I would never have read it. He's like, but hearing his story. And yeah. I told him what I was interested in, what I was doing at the company and what I was doing here at school and how I love design. And I even sent them a little bit of my work. And he's like, uh, how would you feel about designing for us? Would you like to design for the campus store? Bruh. I, it took me a second. My boss, this is how it looked like on the Zoom meeting. My boss, he just turns to me and his eyes are like so wide. <laughs> like none of us expected that. And I was just like, um, of course, yes, like. I would I would love to do that. I'm like, what are we talking about here? And I had one of my company's masks on and it was a sparkly sequence anchor. He's like, we don't need any more like Rhode Island gear, really. We want more fashion, as mm. we call it like, fashion merchandise apparel, where it's state related art. Or he's like, the anchor you're wearing, we would love something revolving around the anchor or like the school seal. Mm. Um, he's like, whatever you want, masks. We talked about neck gaiters, but um, they already had a different contract with that. Uh, and he's like, we would just love for you to do that, but however, you as a company would have to get trademarked. Mm -hmm. CLC, the Collegiate Licensing Company. Um, and he's like, that's a very extensive process. It takes months and months and months. And this is the end of July at this point. I'm coming back to right, school so in school August. Is, yeah. I'm coming back to school for RA training in August. I was like, ooh, how's this going to work? Um, but Paul Whitney told us that um, because we are already trademarked with MLB, major sports licensing. We have a license contract with Harvard. We did that in the past for some reason. It was soft as a grape. Um, we, already knew, Harvard. We, already, we already knew how to do it. So Paul said he would expedite the process and already pre-approve us. And that literally took months, money, and time off this whole thing, which was amazing. And I, for the rest of the time at the company, at soft as a grape. I was working retail leadership, mm -hmm. whatever, during the day or my mm -hmm. night shifts. Um, but either during work, after free times, I was just having meetings on meetings with Richard White where I was doing the collegiate licensing process. I was getting us approved. So yeah. it was a lot of paperwork. It's all about the company's financials. Um, I have to make the products and you have to upload the descriptions. You have to do everything, the spec sheets, um, the colors, everything. It was so mm. intensive and detail oriented. And so I had to focus yeah. on that quickly and like get that out. So I was also doing a lot of mock-ups, sending it to our art department, seeing what was approved and then sending it. And I was working with the buyer of the campus store, who was amazing. She's a TMD alum from University of Rhode Island. And she went right into the campus store. Shout out. Um, love her so much. She's amazing to work with. And I would send her mock-ups and she'd like, okay, this is great. Could you make this a little smaller or a little bigger? So I was just going back and forth. And once we had that final product, we uploaded it. Um, I'm back at school at this point. And I was having meetings with um, the buyer on, mm -hmm. this, on campus. And so finally the CLC approved us. So honestly, we had the purchase orders from the school already. We were just waiting for CLC license. So once we had that, production can start. I think it took us seven to 10 days, our turnaround time. We produce everything in the United States. It was out of our factory in Cape Cod. So it was a very quick turnaround time for it to get to the campus store. Yeah. Um, and I ended up producing six mask designs for them, I believe. I'm looking at them right now. There's some more that aren't on here. And then a t-shirt design they really wanted with the school seal. It's a long sleeve design. Um, and it was just a really amazing process to work with them. And yeah, you want to show the product? I would absolutely love Currently to. Currently online and in the campus store. Um, 
I mean, the, when, when we talk about companies, you know, taking care of their people, this is exactly what we mean. And during COVID, mm -hmm. right, you're seeing companies like Disney totally screwing over their employees who are 1000% dedicated to that company and they're completely screwing them over, but they're still paying out their exec. That is something, and this experience is, I hope to whoever's listening, if you're looking for an internship, you need to find someone, you need to find a connection with the company. Don't settle on an internship just because you need to settle. You know, Shelby didn't give up. That's the whole, that's a huge point. I almost did. I and was she so, so close, so close. If she did, she wouldn't have gotten this. You know, these masks wouldn't be in the campus store. They might be ugly if somebody else did them, but these aren't ugly. So I'm going to show you them because. So I hope you can see it, mm -hmm. but there's one. Sorry for the people listening on like Spotify. Um, but if you want to head over to our YouTube, we can, you can see these. Um, but just here's, here's just a couple of them. Like, again, talking about the detail oriented, um, thing that she was talking about. If you can't take constructive criticism and constructive criticism, this, you know, internships aren't for you. And that's the shirt design also. Yes, this is very nice. Is cool. So nice. Well, that's what I love hearing the feedback. So I would produce, so also as I was making awesome. this, I was at school doing the fine tune editing around RAs on in the office, around residents. I was asking them, like, didn't even tell them it was mine. I'm like, hey, yeah. out of these, which one would you rather wear? What do you like better? What do you want to see? And also I was doing this feedback from That's people amazing. who, the consumers who would be buying it. It's never like, oh, this is what I like. Even if I don't personally like it myself or would wear it, what would you guys buy? That's like what you have to focus on. You're wild. Um, the next Anna Wintour, bro. Stop. Let's go. Well, oh, oh, oh my God. We have to tell that story <laughs> after about Carl Lagerfeld. <laughs> Still sad. I um, was wearing my Carl Lagerfeld purse today. In case oh you didn't my see God. That. Icon, but that's just where I'm at, and also because of that, I didn't tell you this oh, what? yet either. I am currently on the internship hunt for next semester. Still a little unsuccessful in that aspect where um, there's a lot less opportunities than last time, right? Because of course, COVID. But the thing is, my company, Sock is a Grape, has been recruiting me since I was still working with them. So here's my here's my titles. I was a retail leadership intern over the summer. And as I was leaving, and this is, I had this conversation with my I'm boss. Ready. I'm like, okay, I'm still designing for you. I'll be at URI. Okay. It's not an internship anymore. What am I? It's talk money. I'm designing for you. Also, I coordinated the sale. Already knew. You guys have to realize um, this is an amazing opportunity for oh Soft as a Grape themselves because we want to just get into that collegiate pool. So now we Huge. talked about working, though, with going to all schools in New England, offering this. That's a step. Okay, because now we have the licensing. We can do that at any time. So we're just oh my God. can screen print, whatever. So that's something they're interested in. Big money. Um, and I went oh my to God. my boss and I was like, all right, so what's my title? I'm still working for you. What, how does this look? Um, he basically said, what do you want it to be? He said, what do I want it to be? Because I'm still working for them. And it's kind of a freelance position. Mm. And it was hard. Him and he was, we were going back and forth. I was not a designer. I was mm. a designer, product development design, but I was also coordinating these sales. Well, he's like, our company doesn't have a product development coordinator, and that's what you are. Um, so that is the title I received from that, and I still technically I'm gonna hold walk that. Out because this is just still not done with this. Mind. Okay, so I'm product development coordinator. It's freelance. Um, but so basically, if they wanted more, so I'm still open ended. If the campus store sells out and they want more, they want a different design, they want short sleeves, they come to me. I go back to the company. I want short re sleeves. Resale orders. I know I did too. They just wanted to <laughs> start go. with a long sleeve. Um, All right, campus store. Let's so, get a move on. So we're working. But yeah, if you guys, if it gets sold out, we have to do more designs and more stuff here. Me just buys, buys them all. <laughs> this is fine. I get commission on the purchase sale, like the order. So like however many units they want from our company, I get oh commission from that as a designer and as the coordinator of the sale. Um, my boss, Richard White, said, he always said over the summer, if you ever want to come back and work for us next summer, you know, um, you want to be an intern, you want to do this again, we'd love to have you. And I'm like, I would, I appreciate that, but I do want to keep growing. I want to move up um, in the aspect. I don't think I'd want to be a retail leadership intern again, even though it was the most amazing experience, because I just want to keep growing in my career path. And from this opportunity I received from them, they would like to put me up at their headquarters, which is the factory in Wareham Cape. I'd work in the art design Bye. department with their art director, Kim, and I would work in the offices, have my own little office. Did you accept it? Here's the thing. They're so amazing. Um, Jeez, top so secret tea. I have to give them an answer in January. Oh, girl, that's coming up. I, I know. <laughs> it's November. Because <laughs> they need to know. Um, and so he's like, 
he encouraged, he's like, I want you to like still explore and try to find these internships, but just know that you will always have a job and a position here because of how much knowledge I have for this company, how much I've done. And they just want to keep growing and expanding. So like, if I were to work with them, it would be a job. I don't, we could classify an internship, but like I'd be a designer for this company. That's it, Becky. We're going to Martha's (laughs) Vineyard. Let's go rent out a house. Okay. Then we can just chill (laughs) in Shelby's mansion that she's going to get. Becky's my mom, by the way, everybody. (laughs) They love, love each other. Um, (laughs) Becky so that is an opportunity I always have and it's kind of power move to know like I'm trying to search for other internships now because I do want to try to get different experience who knows yeah. or maybe something else out there you I would never like. know you never know um but if I don't get anything I still have this amazing opportunity so I can't really um lose in this situation so this is I'm very driving me nuts. <laughs> at a good I'm at a good yeah this is my that by the way, so. Yeah, well, we talk, um, when we see each other, <laughs> when we're not busy 24 seven, like today when we went to dinner, that poor waiter was probably like, what the We just couldn't girls? stop talking. <laughs> he just wants to tell us the specials. Or like, <laughs> wait, 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 we gotta finish this. <laughs> I don't even remember his name. I was gonna shout him out, but don't did remember. He, did he, oh. Anyways, um, this is, so when I hear about people not taking internship um, like opportunities when they're like, younger this is exactly like where i point them to when i started at uri and i got that thing proud mama moment i have to bleep that out because i can't say their name because they're big four but it's okay um when i got the opportunity it's like as a freshman they were already recruiting right so once you start to make an impression you start to start to move up you also get kind of more comfortable once you know how good of a company they are saying this is what I want. This is where I'm trying to be in a couple of years. So let's start here. So if Shelby didn't say, you know, and keep saying, you know, I really, as much as I love this, this is a great opportunity. Thank you so much. But I really am interested in design. This wouldn't have happened. Somebody that is, you know, just okay and settling, it wouldn't have, it, things don't happen for you. But for me, I'm really interested in recruitment. I know for my internship over the summer, they did, the, uh, somebody from the recruitment team reached out. I love marketing and, you know, all that stuff. So, like, I was able to get into that, even though it's accounting, mm-hmm. because I asked. And never, I was going to say, it never hurts to ask. Because never. the worst, the worst you can, can get is no. Yes. The best you can get is to let you do what yeah. you asked for or anything. It's just, and also companies, they take notice. I was just getting praised the whole time it's just there, because there's other interns and they were okay with just where they were. It may not have been there, whatever, but I was trying to make the best out of it to what would benefit me. And that's not even a selfish thing. That's trying no. to tailor that opportunity and that experience to what you need it for yourself. Right. Like retail leadership, I gained so much amazing knowledge mm-hmm. I didn't know before about the industry, but I still thought I wanted, I wanted more for myself. Yeah. I wanted to learn more and I'm not afraid to ask for that. If you are driven, if you're passionate about what you're doing, they see that and they love that because Mm. it shows that you care about what you're doing and it's more than just something to put on a piece of paper. Absolutely. It is more than just your resume. Now, when somebody, when she does go for a job, when somebody asks about that experience, there's no way that a job is going to turn her down. They might say, you know, you're a little overqualified for us, but they're never going to say, you know, you're underqualified. Um, that's what's crazy too to be at this age and this point in my college Dude, my college career and I have a portfolio you're a portfolio now that I can say hey guys I designed physical product that you can go buy right now online I put the link in it like it's one thing designing something for fun but to have something physically being sold in a mm-hmm. store that I could put my name on is this a real experience that yes. I'm still not um, it's just crazy for me and did uh, in our freshman year I know a lot of kids that are driven like us and are in the same position mm-hmm. where we are. We're very secure. We're, we're excited to, you know, see what's going to happen after school because we know that we are secure in where we are and we're going to get a job after college. We'll make it work. Oh, 1000%. Mm-hmm. We always do. But when those, those students that are like, you're a freshman, why are you going to career fair? Oh, I remember or, that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Why are you, why are you coming here? I mean, first of all, recruiters and people who run internships love freshmen. They love them because fresh mind. Freshmen that are driven, though, because if they oh, know yeah. you're a freshman showing up at these events, they're like instant, like wow. Because seniors, yeah. juniors, you're required to go. Freshmen has no reason to be there nope. otherwise, and they want to be, and that's more appealing to them than a senior that's forced to go. Yeah, I loved my URI 101 students this, this semester. Good. A couple of them were very awesome, and 
Um, even in my last class, I, I didn't realize how awesome they were until my last class too, because I gave a presentation on diversity. They're all just so smart and they all want to do something more than just go to college right now. So Good. it's like, if you have the opportunity to, you know, not influence, but influence students when they're young, as a student, then do it because you can tell them, you know, through these experiences, you're going to be secure by your senior year. But all the people that don't take these opportunities, I mean, they're all freaking out. And well, I mean, especially we're with juniors. COVID, it's really it's hard now um, to get those yeah. opportunities. That's why I'm very glad to know I have a fallback exactly. option already because it's been really hard. Um, I saved a lot of internships from last year that said same time apply next year when you're junior and senior well, i'm a junior senior yep. level and i can't get into but them no. because they're not holding them anymore yep. because of covid exactly um, so that's actually been really difficult um, but i'm also very firmly believe like if i can't get an internship and then i'm working with soft as a grape that's meant to happen i don't feel like anything's out of my hands or like oh that's a second resort things are never happen in my life that they're supposed to this yeah. opportunity of soft as a grape could have never happened if i deleted that college of business email Shout that, out, be college honest business. if i deleted that newsletter i was gonna and then i wouldn't have been in france either because of covid and i would have done nothing this summer you're right oh you're <laughs> that's true i didn't even think about that mm -hmm. that's true so i'm just very wow. comfortable at this yep. point trusting in the path and the journey that's the process but also Trusted. you have to make it work you have yeah. to go for you have to look for that you have to be on top of things you have to be driven you kind of have to be aggressive with it um otherwise you can't just let life pass you by you go after it but it's out there waiting for you and then it will fall into your lap oh my god that's absolutely fabulous thank you for saying that you're beautiful do you have anything else you want to tell the listeners and viewers Honestly, whatever you're passionate about, don't be afraid to show it. I don't know why. I don't know. That's kind of a thing. Like, oh, if you're, I, every day this summer was so overly enthusiastic because that is my personality. And it was true. Whatever true. is genuine to you, let it happen because people notice it. Mm. I've made connections from customers I had this summer who want orders from things in California that we, I got through the company or whatever, just because they notice you are a genuine and true person whatever you love, whatever you're passionate about, just do it and show it because people will notice and they're drawn to that. Yes. Don't be scared. Honestly, it's life is much more fun when you start to live it. Oh, <laughs> Let's be honest. 2020 has changed Shelby. We don't know her anymore. In a good way. In a good way. In the good best way. way. No, best way. literally. You've grown. And we, and I'm, I mean, I've grown too. Everyone has grown through this experience. I think people are very discouraged and I hope people don't listen to this and they're like, oh, that's one experience. It's not going to happen to me. But it, it can. can. It can happen to you. You have to put the work in. This is exactly why being driven and hardworking and being, you know, even if you're an introvert, being extroverted and going out and saying, I want this. I'm going to make it happen. Manifesting I'm it. I'm going to say manifest it was my word in February. I had a whole thing about it. It was popping up everywhere. And then as soon as I... Put the internship out of my op my mind and said if it's meant to be it's meant to be and the next morning i got it it manifests for you it's when you put that energy out there oh, where yeah. you work 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 don't mm -hmm. think it's not going to pay off because oh, if yeah. it's not right now i was discouraged i was really disappointed because i was working for months mm -hmm. guys months like and then it happened the universe will give you what you like deserve yeah. and what you're putting out there will match that energy do you want to tell them what your co-star said today Yes, guys, I have co-star. Um, we all do. Don't be embarrassed. I don't check it a lot, but, um, you know, the update, it's weird and it's really specific oh, where I've it says it. do this and don't do this. Um, I should find mine. It tells, yeah, pull it up. It tells you oh, what to do I'm and not do away. that day. Uh -huh. um, and what it said to do today was podcast. Oh, podcast. That's, that's not a coincidence, y'all. And this was, this was planned for a long time, so yes. um, thank you for having yes. me on your podcast. Oh my god, it's so fun. Um, tell them where they can find you, where they can find your new masks and your apparel. All right, so if you want to follow my Instagram, it's just Shelby Kansky. I post on there a lot. If you go online to the URI campus store under clothing, under Ram Zone, um, I had the long sleeves under the long sleeves, masks is under face apparel, as you can see, Love it. Um, face coverings, whatever from Jasmine showed you, um, post the link occasionally, I think we're going to post it Absolutely. with this as well, so click Fire there, check that out, um, it's a good cause, and it's yes. really comfortable, it's really good quality clothing, that's what we pride ourselves in. Exactly, So, um, and if you're ever near a soft as a grape, 
right? That's what mm -hmm. that's I want to make sure. So I didn't mess it up because this is, you can obviously see this is a company that works hard for not only their customers, mm -hmm. but for their employees. About that, they, through my club, president of a club, my boss, Richard White, he's like, I don't even want to really look anywhere else. He's like, if you have members, if you know people, just send them my way. Um, Sophia reached out about the internship. That's right, she was telling me that the other day. Yeah, Shout Sophia. So like, I have, he trusted me, so I used my club and went through the club. And so now he, this is gonna be a forever connection with URI that he's going to go to. Absolutely to amazing. For internships. So if anyone's also interested, about learning more about this, the company, message me on Instagram, oh. DM me. I love talking about this. Um, I'm open to helping you in your path as well, so. I love it. Well, thank you so much and love you so much. You are such a queen and thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. <laughs> that is the end of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Shelby. She's an absolute queen, an icon. She is a friend that when I'm talking about, you need to surround yourself with people that make you feel successful and keep you on your toes and make sure that you are following your goals. She is the exact friend that I am talking about in those situations. Um, just so motivating someone who in five even five years I was gonna say ten but even in five um, we are going to be so successful we're on the path we are hardworking you know we might be you know small it looks like we're quiet women but we're not and we're ready to take over this bitch so get ready and get ready for our names to be in your household um, very soon but thank you to Shelby again for coming on I absolutely love her to death and yeah before you log off for today i cannot believe that next episode is our 10th episode i'm literally i literally can't stop thinking about it like first of all i know exactly what i'm going to talk about i'm really excited to talk about it you guys are going to meet some very awesome people um but it will be a solo episode about me talking about a topic that i'm very excited to i know i'm like keeping it mysterious but i'm really excited for you guys to hear it and i'm so thankful that I've made it to 10 episodes you know when you see these podcasts start off you know you really get into it and then all of a sudden they stop at like four five six and then you're like well, what happened um but you know throughout coronavirus and us quarantining it was just something that I really wanted to get into and I'm so glad that I did I've learned so much from other people I have made awesome connections and I'm so excited for you guys to hear the 10th episode which will come out next Monday so I'm ready for you guys to grow into your potential and that is what I'm here for I'm so ready for next episode and I hope you are too this is Jasmine with the adult algorithm signing off bye Bye, YouTube.